Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Introduction to the BIOS. Today I'm going to give you some BIOS basics. We're going to access a BIOS, and then we'll talk about how to update a BIOS. And with that, let's go ahead and begin this session. So of course, we begin with BIOS basics. So what are the basics of BIOS? Let's begin with what the BIOS is. BIOS stands for Basic Input Output System. It is the first software to run on a PC when the power is turned on. It is actually a firmware software that establishes the base behavior of the PC. It sets the hardware configuration of the system. It tells the PC what hardware to initialize and what the priority of that hardware is. It also points the PC to the files that are needed to boot the operating system. Now, BIOS is stored in non-volatile random access memory, NVRAM. That's a special type of memory that doesn't require an electrical charge to keep what's in the memory. It is designed and coded for the specific motherboard that it resides on. BIOS updates can add functionality to a system that wasn't originally present when the motherboard was installed. Now let's move on to how to access the BIOS. So why might you need to access the BIOS? Well, system stability may have been compromised by the addition of new components. Some people, gamers, adjust settings in the BIOS to improve performance. More importantly, the BIOS may need to be entered in order to help in the system recovery process. You know that brother-in-law of yours that is always got his PC infected? He called you up to seek your help. His computer won't even boot now. Well, you can resolve that issue if you can get into BIOS. So let's access a BIOS now. Now for the purposes of this demonstration on how to access the BIOS, I'm going to be using a virtual machine, a VM, that's on my laptop. Now the BIOS for this virtual machine is pretty basic, but it will work for the purposes of this demonstration. So let's go ahead and fire up this virtual machine. The first thing that you need to know about accessing a BIOS is how to do it. And in this case, I need to hit the delete key during the post, the power on self test. Different BIOSes may have a different method of accessing. Some of them require that you hit the delete key, some the F2 key, and there are other combinations out there. It's up to the manufacturer of the BIOS to set it. So here we are on the main page of the BIOS setup utility. Let me get this centered a little bit better. So here we are on the main page of the BIOS setup utility for this virtual machine. The first thing that you should notice is that the manufacturer of this BIOS is AMI. They're one of the main manufacturers of it. And this BIOS is version 8.00.02. And it was built on August 14th, 2009. It is not the most current version of BIOS. Now, in most cases, when you access your BIOS, you're not going to have access to your mouse because it hasn't been initialized yet. So you have to use your arrow keys in order to navigate. Now let's take care of your brother-in-law's problem. Remember, he can't boot. He's gotten his system so infected, it will no longer boot. So we would arrow over to the boot tab and take a look at the boot priority. The boot priority in this virtual machine is to look for the hard drive first and then to look for a CD-ROM. With this information, I could create a system recovery utility CD-ROM that was bootable and reset the priority so that it would boot to the CD-ROM first so I could clean up my brother-in-law's system and then get him going again. There is a ton of information that is available to you in the BIOS. Now this is a pretty basic BIOS, so I can't show it all to you. As a matter of fact, I can't show most of this to you. But quite often you have system configuration information. Not only the boot sequence, but also device status and things like system speed, that's your clock speed. 
whether or not you have virtualization support and you also have biosecurity. Now this one does have biosecurity. I could put in a password here that would prevent my brother-in-law from changing my BIOS settings on his system to keep him out of it and it make it easier for me to fix it the next time. A lot of BIOSes also have monitoring capability. They can tell you what the temperature is inside your case and what the temperature of your CPU is. You can also see fan speeds on a lot of BIOSes and adjust those speeds. A lot of BIOSes also have built-in diagnostic information and the ability to use that information to tweak your system. But now that we've used your systems recovery utility disk and fix your brother-in-law's computer, let's exit out of here. If you notice, we have to save the configuration, by the way. And if everything worked right, then we're back up and running. And voila, your brother-in-law system's running it once again. Now let's move on to how to update the BIOS. Before I begin talking about the how to update a BIOS, I need to issue a warning. The BIOS is required in order for the system to boot. Making a mistake while updating the BIOS may have serious consequences for your system. You may not be able to boot. So let's talk briefly about why the BIOS may need to be updated. Well, you can extend the productive life of a system by adding additional functionality to the system by updating the BIOS. You also might need to update the BIOS to resolve issues that were unknown at the time that the BIOS was created. So what is the specific process required to update the BIOS? Well, the motherboard or system manufacturer is responsible for developing the BIOS update process for each motherboard. So in order to update the BIOS, you need to follow the manufacturer's instructions to the letter to avoid a catastrophic failure. Now that concludes this session on the introduction to the BIOS. I talked about BIOS basics. I talked about how to access BIOS and I showed you accessing a BIOS. And then I briefly touched on how to update the BIOS. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I'm sure another one will occur soon.